welcome back to the Black Cooperative Matters interview series of Elizabeth L. Carter, Esquire, LLC. The purpose of this series is to bring light to the existence and successes and challenges of today's Black-owned cooperatives within the United States. Similar to other Black-owned small businesses, Black cooperatives struggle to get the necessary, necessary capital and other resources to help launch, grow, and sustain their community enterprises. So today we have Lucretia John and Danielle LeBlanc here with us, and they're going to talk to us about green worker cooperatives. Hi, ladies. How are you both? Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are um, you? We have a presentation, so I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Um, if you uh, enable participant screen sharing, and Lucretia will start us off. Okay. Um, so, um, hi, my name is Lucretia John. I'm the Director of Development here at Green Worker Cooperatives. We are an organization that, um, that, that um, recruits, um, supports, uh, recruits, trains, and supports teams of, um, of entrepreneurs to start their um, own worker-owned businesses. Um, all of the, all of the, the, all of the businesses that we, that we, um, support the incubation of they're all they're all businesses that have a that are that are owned by by um by the by the workers and also thank you <laughs> they they're owned by the by the workers primarily um, um immigrant folks and communities of of color and um and and they're all um businesses that have a green a green focus um overall the businesses that we work with they're also they're also um, very much committed to um, committed to racial gender and economic equity which is really the um, you know really the one of the primary tenants of worker owned and cooperative businesses um, can i can i have the and, slide yeah um, and i also just wanted to highlight that gwc pioneered the um, worker uh, cooperative bootcamp model of um, teaching uh, teams of people how to start a worker cooperative. So, so our um, so our our model um, incorporates um, the um, utilizes the Co-op Learning Institute. It is a five month. Um, um, there's a five month program that um, includes a variety of topics, um, topics, uh, training rather, coaching and technical assistance services. The range of topics includes business model canvas, um, how setting prices for your, for your product and your services, partnering with, with, um, with, with your team, conflicts mediation. And, um, and so it's, and so, and, and so it's really about um, not just um, not just um, connecting with folks who have a dream, but also the next level, right? How do you really take your take your dream of entrepreneurship and and build the tools in order to launch a cooperative business together? Okay. And um, do you want to continue, or I could transition, Lucretia? And then I can oh, start. Sure. The I, and and actually, this the, this the slide here goes into details about about the various topics that we cover in the that we cover in the in the training program: business model development, membership manual, how to set up your systems, how to have meetings that run really well, and of course, if there if there um, if and if and when um, there are there are grievan there are grievances or conflict, how to address those in a way. That is that are that are helpful, regenerative, and restorative. Um, also, marketing, business planning, and also general business advice. Um, within our work, we partner. We um, we we partner with um, with Take Root Justice, which provides, which is a which is another worker-owned um, business, and they provide pro bono legal assistance. Um, pro bono legal assistance. We also partner with the Business Outreach Center Network. Um, which provides pro bono assistance with financial projections and analysis, and then also um, for for connecting with uh, capital uh, and loans, co-ops can all co-ops can apply to the working world for 
non-extractive financing. And again, they, the working world is a cooperative uh, lending institution. Uh, Danielle, would you like to add in anything in that, um, in this, in this page? Should I leave it? Uh, no, I think that's a good overview. We could um, proceed. So the Co-op Learning Institute, um, as Lucretia mentioned, is a five-month program. Each session is about two hours. Um, our focus is working with worker cooperatives um, that are in the Bronx and Upper Manhattan. Um, and um, we also work with co-ops um, in, in New York City in general, but our, our target market is the Bronx Upper Manhattan. Um, and we work primarily with um, communities of color, BIPOC communities. But um, this, uh, during the transition from COVID, um, we've been working online uh, now and providing our institute online as opposed to in person. And um, this has expanded our opportunity to work with people uh, greatly. And so um, this year we actually have some uh, cooperative teams that are from around the country outside of New York. Um, and so we're experimenting with that and, and seeing um, you know, where that leads. Um, but there is a definitely great demand for um, people who are interested in uh, starting worker cooperatives and um, finding an alternative um, path to business development, um, something that is um, fosters economic democracy uh, and getting out of traditional um, you know, capital focus systems, capitalistic focus uh, systems. Um, and so while we will always have our focus being the Bronx and Upper Manhattan, um, we are trying to find ways to, um, you know, share what we do with the um, wider um, BIPOC community in the States, um, people who, you know, have this desire to form worker owned cooperatives. Um, so the, as I mentioned, the worker co-ops that um, have created um, after they have gone through our um, boot camp model, um, it's very um, varied. So we don't look and decide what type of businesses to be created. We just open the opportunity to our, our co-op learning institute to the community and they decide, you know, what, um, businesses um, they would like to pursue or what services their communities need. Um, so there's a, a big, um, there's a variety of co-ops that are formed from doula cooperatives, composting cooperatives, food cooperatives, cleaning cooperatives, um, photography co-op cooperatives, um, language justice cooperatives. Um, we have a card um, and uh, a greeting card cooperative um, and handcraft um, and uh, cooperatives that are consultant services and do graphic design work. So, um, and it's all from people um, bringing their talents to the fore and seeing their community needs and how they can meet those needs by forming a collective business. Mm -hmm. um, and so all the work we do is aimed towards supporting people meet their dream of starting worker own cooperatives. And um, here we're ending with just two examples. Um, one is We Are Earth. They are a um, BIPOC led urban farm in Brooklyn. Um, they uh, farm themselves um, and um, they farm herbs and mushrooms and specialty, um, um, specialty plants, but they also teach people how to, and advise people how to start their own um, container farms. And they also um, provide different training to schools, et cetera, just on um, farming and food justice, et cetera. And, um, you know, our program is helpful because it's geared to meet the needs of working people. Um, so all our program is offered in the evening. Um, it is free. We get funding for this program. Um, we try to 
Um, right now we offer it, it's a bilingual program in English and Spanish. Um, and we have dreams of expanding it for right now. <laughs> uh, in terms of language justice, that's uh, what we're able to provide right now. Um, and we try to bring um, not only um, provide the training in the program, but build community and have members of um, who participate in our program um, network together and mm -hmm. start building together and cooperating with each other. Um, uh, another co-op that went through our program is Solar Uptown Now Services or SUNS. Um, this is a co-op. Um, their members, they went through a um, solar installation training program. And after they finished it, um, they did not um, find jobs available right away. Um, and so they decided, they got together and decided to start their own business. And they went through our uh, training program and then um, you know, worked with our pro bono um, partners to legally form. And right now, they are up and operating and they recently got a nice sort of grant and um, they provide solar installation services um, to the New York City uh, area and um, the greater New York City region. And um, that's our last slide, that's the overview of who we are and what we do. So uh, I don't know if you have more questions for us. Um, Yes, I, um, the work you all are doing is absolutely amazing. Can you tell us both about how you got involved with this or how you learned about cooperatives? The Chris, do you want to start? Sure. Um, I oh, how I came to learn about cooperatives. I, I I've done a lot of community organizing work, a lot of grassroots work, and in the course of conversations and envisioning around, around, um, around ways to um, uh, engage people in, in meaningful ways. Like what, are, like what are alternatives to businesses that are, that are purely extractive? Um, that's, that's when I started learning more about, about cooperative businesses. And it's an exciting model. It's an exciting model. Um, what does it look like? like to where, where we're all bosses how does that impact the conversations that we that we have and um and as black folks what's like what are the ways that like how does that um what new opportunities what new challenges um then arise in that in from then arise um my family is from is from Guyana and so we are you know we've I've grown up in a very, I've already grown up in a very cooperative model um, and, and being able to, to, to bring that, um, to bring my cultural experience to, um, to, to my commitment to um, this kind of um, cooperative solidarity focused um, economic justice work is, has been, has been really meaningful to me. Yeah. yeah um... And I forgot to introduce myself. I think I just jumped <laughs> in <laughs> amid uh, slides. So my name is Danielle LeBlanc and uh, I work at Green Worker Cooperatives. Uh, I have previous experience in um, community development, uh, providing um, grants and loans to community organizations. And, um, and prior to working here, I also um, worked in the microfinance field for a few years and um, have experience um, doing business plan development, et cetera, with credit unions, which it's another form of cooperative. Um, and I actually learned about green worker cooperatives um, when I um, helped organize an event for uh, or a microfinance organization I belong to. And someone, uh, uh, a co-op, um, spoke at that event about their business and about green worker cooperatives and I thought it sounded like the greatest thing ever I went on their website and saw they had a position open so I applied and um started this journey and um yeah I think the starting a business is hard right you know you need access to capital you need um a support system 
And, you know, by forming a worker cooperative, it's, it helps you to pool your resources. Um, it, it pulls the stress of decision-making um, and it allows under, if you're under resource, it, it gives you a network, uh, um, a team to build your business together with. Um, mm -hmm. It is, but it is difficult, right? Because it's cooperative. And so you have to learn how to make decisions together um, and focus on win-win situations and collaborations. And so um, it also just helps you not only in your business, but in your life, um, think of the possibilities and think of cooperation and work toward um, that and that, that vision of life as opposed to an antagonistic lose, uh, win-lose scenarios or zero-sum scenarios, et cetera. Um, and so that's, that's what I like and what attracts me to worker cooperatives and helping people um, with their dreams of forming worker-owned cooperatives. Yes, I like that. So since you both have this extensive experience with advising cooperatives and helping them get resources, what advice would you give to groups interested in going towards this worker um, worker on cooperative model? Like, what are some insights you would give to them? Danielle, I'm going to hand the microphone to you. <laughs> um, well, I would say one piece of advice would be that if you want to start this journey just to start, right? Um, there's no such thing as the perfect time or being the perfect, perfectly prepared. Um, and to um, focus not only on getting the business skills you need, the technical skills you need for whatever particular industry you're in, but also focusing on the uh, interpersonal skills you need. Um, because um, you, are forming a business where you are trying to make decisions, collective decisions together. So the business um, provides and meets the needs of all of the worker owners. Um, and also ideally also addresses a need of your, for your community, right? Um, and you have to understand your relationship to working collaboratively, collaboratively <laughs> collaboratively with others, your relationship to money and what might trigger you. Um, and just um, constantly focusing on what the purpose that brings you to the table, like why you're here as a team. Mm -hmm. um, and just to be patient with yourself um, and not be afraid to um, make mistakes as you move forward. Um, just have that feedback mechanism and always be willing to um, try again and because it, it is a journey. Starting a business, no matter what kind of business, um, um, takes patience and persever uh, perseverance um, uh, more than it takes knowing exactly what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. So with that, and a lot of people, like the vast majority of society might not know what cooperatives are, or even worker-owned cooperatives. Do you think there are some common misconceptions within the cooperative space? Lucretia, do you want to take that one or would you? Oh, sure. Um, do you mean mis misconceptions that, that folks in cooperatives have or? about cooperatives. And the cooperatives are misconceptions that people have about cooperatives in general. Oh, okay. Um, um, I, think, I, think one, I think one thing is that, oh, there, there has to be a boss. There has to be one person in charge with the vision or there has to be, um, or, or like it's, or, or, that, or, or that the, or that the possibility of a, of, of a, of a business structure where there is um, equal say, equal invest, um, uh, like equal say, equal power, equal like one person, one vote, that somehow that that's um, not sustainable. But I think 
I, I think I think there are ways that we that we that we do it all the all the time. Um, I grew up with two. I grew up with two sisters and the the level of cooperative decision making involved with things like toys or or buying snacks after school um, that that cooperation already already exists and it's already there. You know, also, you know, conflict is an expected part of it and conflict is uh, I would say that's that's a second uh, misconception, right? That conflict is this is this terrible thing that hurts businesses or hurts relationships and it doesn't have to. Conflict can really be regenerative. Conflict, I, I, I see conflict as an opportunity to say, oh, here's, 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 here's something that we're not in alignment on. Let's have a conversation about it. Let's, let's see, let's see what's, let's see what's happening in this, in, in this moment. Is it a matter of, um, is it a misunderstanding? Is it a, Oh, is, is it a misunderstanding between us? Is it a lack of information um, or a lack of training? Is it a, um, what's the, like a, uh, a, like a values misalignment, right? Like where, where are the opportunities? How, what are the opportunities to engage with conflict as a part of life? As, as what, what are ways to, I'm, I'm always looking at what are ways to look at conflict as part of how we get along? Um, because it's great to, the idea of getting along 100% of the time is a wonderful idea, but the, <laughs> but anyone who's in any relationship knows that, that there's just so much good stuff that comes from seeing the ways that we're different and bringing that difference to the table for, for, for greater, for greater growth and, um, greater growth of the business and greater growth of the people involved. That's a great answer. <laughs> yeah. And I just wanted to um, emphasize one of the things that Lucretia uh, said that, um, you know, that worker cooperatives take all safe and sizes and you don't need to have a boss. And um, you could be horizontally structured or you could be um, a, a, a more traditional vertical structured organization. Um, you could be small, just a two-person co-op, or you could be a large, like Cooperative Home Care Associates, a CHCA. Um, they are a home care um, cooperative that has over 2,000 employees located here in the Bronx. Um, it's the largest uh, cooperative in the States. Um, and so um, the only requirement for having and forming a worker cooperative is that it is worker owned. So with you all's experience and working even in your co-op academy, do you, have you been able to recognize that specifically black co-ops face unique challenges? And if so, can you all elaborate on that? Um, I'm thinking about the, loans. I'm thinking about the capital access. Yes. Well, it's, it's the capital access. It's, like um, a number of issues, right? So um, black co-ops face the same issues that um, black people face in terms of um, the stressors um, and having, you know, an extra burden. Like, um, so a lot of co-ops that do come through our um, co-op um, co learning institute or boot camp model, they come because they do see a community need and they want to address it through the worker cooperative. And so, um, and having that, that mission um, based purpose of their business um, that could sometimes a war with um, the fact that you are starting a business, right? So you can't provide free services, but like how do you um, find a business model that serves your community purpose while still sustains your cooperative members with a living wage and allows you to eventually grow your cooperative to um, allow members to have a sustainable living, right? So um, how do you marry that dual purpose? Um, and then as the Krista said, um, you know, if, you know, one of the things is a relationship to uh, capital, right? Um, 
even if you are able to take out a loan, do you want to take out a loan? What's your comfort um, with um, having that debt and having that debt together as a collective? Mm. Um, and so thinking about your relationship with money and your access to money, because um, um, that also can impact how quickly you're able to go grow. You need uh, initial startup capital, right? So. Um, yeah, I, I would say those are, are two um, issues that I could think of at the top of my head. Do you find that a lot of cooperatives have issues accessing legal support for what they want to do or even, even starting getting started on the cooperative business structure? I would say because it's built into our program that we talk about um, the cooperative legal structure, we talk about governance, um, and we have a pro bono relationship um, with um, Take Root Justice and they provide um, the assistance of legal formation documents, your organizing documents, your bylaws, et cetera, um, and submit the paperwork for the cooperatives. Our particular cooperatives don't have that need, but I think in general, I would say yes. One issue is, again, if they want to form a co-op LLC, for example, the money involved in uh, creating an LLC can be a barrier where you have to save the money for the publication requirements, et cetera. Um, that can be issue. And I think um, beyond um, legal formation uh, needs, legal needs, um, there are other areas where um, you know, there might not be the bandwidth for pro bono legal services to, to meet the needs of all our co-ops. If people need like contract assistance, for example, or helping help with um, reviewing um, leases or, you know, other type of like HR um, uh, advice, legal advice around HR matters, et cetera. So I think um, there is a need for greater legal assistance beyond the um, formation process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree, I agree. Well, ladies, it has been such a pleasure having you both here and learning about your roles. We like to wrap up our interview uh, with just one question. So I would love for both of you to answer and chime in. Why do you think black cooperatives matter and what does that phrase mean to you? Hmm. I would say for, go ahead, Lucrisa. Um, Sorry. I would say that Black cooperatives matter because any space, any anytime we create a space where, um, where we're able to maintain autonomy over, um, over the number of hours you work per day, how much money we're making, um, we're able to have more decision making um, in in the process. I see all of that as being as being um, 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 both a realignment of a lot of a lot of ways that 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 our people have have collaborated together throughout centuries um, with throughout throughout centuries throughout the diaspora, but also it it provides us with um, with an opportunity to be collaborative. And not competitive, and 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 to really move from a space of of, of abundance, and rather move from a place of, of abundance and possibility, rather one rather than from one of scarcity and lack, and 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 I'm really excited. As I said, I'm really excited about possibilities that exist when we're able to come together from a place of visioning and from and from thoughtful abundance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with Lucretia. Um, I think one in the United States in particular, um, that Black people have always been creative in um, um, and at the forefront of um, trying to find uh, new systems that um, allow us to like, um, 
bring our humanity to the forefront and address needs that are not being met by systems that not, weren't created for us or, or our well-being. And so I feel that's one of the roles that Black people um, have in this cooperative movement, right? Like trying to create uh, workspaces that meets the needs of the workers, right? Um, and um, there's a great opportunity for this, not only for people starting their own work um, businesses, work own businesses, but for example, we belong to a coalition um, and part of that coalition is a program called the Owners to Owners Program, where um, people who um, own a business and want to retire or just want to sell their business can sell it to their employees and the employees can start a worker owned cooperative. They could pull their resources together and buy out the business from the owners. Um, and that um, is like an excellent way for, you know, um, you know, people to start that journey if they don't want to start their own worker cooperative and, and trying to figure out, um, yeah, just how, um, you know, we can work in places where we have more control and decision-making power over our lives. Um, mm -hmm. Since that's the space where we, like most of our time is spent in at work and it's a place that is, there's no democratic decision-making at all. Um, so yeah, I would say black co matter because um, black folk are always at the forefront of, pushing um, for more democracy in, the, in this country, mm -hmm. whether, um, no matter what the venue is, whether it's civic or not, this is in the workspace. Um, yeah, I'm rambling, but that's <laughs> my, uh, my, <laughs> my spiel on why Black Coats matter. Well, yes. Thank you, ladies. Okay. <laughs>